Hello and welcome to Spur Economics. In this video, we will discuss the Cobb-Douglas production function, its important properties and estimation. The Cobb-Douglas production function is named after American economists Charles Cobb and Paul Douglas. They introduced this production function in 1928 in their paper titled A Theory of Production. It was based on their empirical research into the relationship between inputs, labor and capital, and output in the manufacturing sector. It is one of the most widely used production functions because it has several desirable properties and is easy to implement in practice. Now let us see what the Cobb-Douglas production function looks like. In the function shown here, Q represents the production or output and the inputs are L for labor and K for capital. That is, production or output is a function of labor and capital. The coefficient A is the efficiency parameter which is also sometimes referred to as the technology parameter. It is a constant which represents the state of technology. The coefficient alpha represents the output elasticity with respect to labor. Similarly, beta is the output elasticity with respect to capital. The original Cobb-Douglas production function assumed constant returns to scale which means that the sum of alpha and beta is equal to 1. That is, if labor and capital increased by a certain factor, then the output will also increase by the same factor. However, this function can easily accommodate increasing and decreasing returns to scale if we don't restrict the sum of alpha and beta to be 1. If the sum of alpha and beta is greater than 1, we have increasing returns to scale. Conversely, if the sum of output elasticities, that is, the sum of alpha and beta is less than 1, then we are dealing with decreasing returns to scale. Now, let us discuss the important properties of the Cobb-Douglas production function. Firstly, the Cobb-Douglas production function is a homogeneous production function. This implies that if the scale of inputs is increased by a certain factor, the output will also increase by the same factor. The degree of homogeneity depends on the returns to scale. The original Cobb-Douglas production function is a homogeneous function of degree 1 because there are constant returns to scale. Suppose that the scale of inputs is increased by a factor of t. Then the production function can be adjusted as shown here as both inputs labor and capital are multiplied by a factor of t. As we simplify, we can see that the output Q will increase by t raised to the power alpha plus beta. If we have constant returns to scale, then this alpha plus beta will be 1. Hence, output will also increase by a factor of t. This means that the function is homogeneous of degree 1 in case of constant returns. In case of increasing and decreasing returns to scale, the function is homogeneous of degree alpha plus beta. That is, if scale of inputs is increased by t, then output will increase by a factor of t raised to the power alpha plus beta. Next, we can show that the output elasticities with respect to labor and capital are shown by alpha and beta. The formula for calculating elasticities is shown here. Here, change in Q with respect to change in L is simply the marginal product of labor. We can take the first order derivative to calculate this marginal product. After simplifying, we can see that the output elasticity with respect to labor is equal to alpha. We can use a similar procedure to show this for capital as well, where the output elasticity with respect to capital is equal to beta. In other words, these parameters alpha and beta show the responsiveness of output due to a change in labor or capital. With a 1% increase in labor, keeping capital constant, the output will increase by alpha percent. Similarly, a 1% increase in capital, keeping labor constant, will increase the output by beta percent. The Cobb-Douglas production function follows the law of diminishing returns to a factor. As more of an input is employed in production, keeping the other input constant, the marginal product of the successive units of that input will go on decreasing. For example, the marginal product of labor will go on decreasing as more labor is used, given that capital stays the same. To see this, we can take the second-order derivative with respect to labor and capital. 
the first-order derivative is simply the marginal products of labor and capital. The first and second-order derivatives can be easily derived as shown here. In case of labor, we can derive the second-order derivative as shown here. We know that alpha will always be less than 1 in case of constant and decreasing returns to scale because alpha plus beta is equal to 1 in constant returns and less than 1 in decreasing returns. Even in increasing returns, this alpha is rarely greater than 1. As a result, this whole term will end up being negative because alpha minus 1 will be negative. Since this second-order derivative is negative, we have diminishing returns with respect to labor. Similarly, we can derive this for capital and show diminishing returns with respect to capital. The marginal products of inputs are related to their average product in the Cobb-Douglas production function. The marginal product can be easily expressed in terms of the average product of the input. Average product is simply the output Q divided by the input. Therefore, APL will be Q divided by L and APK will be Q divided by K. Earlier, we also derived the MPL and MPK as shown here. MPL is equal to alpha Q divided by L and MPK is equal to beta Q divided by K. From here, we can simply substitute the APL and APK into the formulas. Hence, MPL is equal to alpha multiplied by APL, that is, marginal product of labor is equal to its output elasticity multiplied by its average product. Similarly, marginal product of capital is equal to beta multiplied by its average product. MRTS or marginal rate of technical substitution shows the amount by which one input must be reduced to increase the other input by one unit and still produce the same output. In other words, it shows the trade-off between the inputs. For example, MRTS will show the amount of capital that must be reduced to increase the labor by one unit and still produce the same output. MRTS can be derived for the Cobb-Douglas production function using the formula shown here. We already calculated the marginal products for labor and capital earlier, so we can easily substitute those in this formula. After simplifying, we can see that MRTS is expressed in terms of capital-labor ratio and their output elasticities alpha and beta. Using MRTS, we can also easily derive the elasticity of substitution for the Cobb-Douglas production function. The elasticity of substitution can be defined as the ratio of percent change in the capital labor ratio to the percent change in MRTS. It is used to measure the substitutability between the inputs, that is, how easy is it to substitute one input for the other. This elasticity of substitution is estimated using the formula shown here. When we substitute the formula for MRTS in here, all the elements in the elasticity of substitution formula cancel each other out in the case of Cobb-Douglas production function. Hence, the elasticity of substitution is 1 for the Cobb-Douglas production function. One of the advantages of the Cobb-Douglas production function is that it is easy to estimate in practice. We can estimate it using the method of ordinary least squares after taking the logarithm of the function. The parameters a, alpha and beta of the function can be estimated using ordinary least squares. When we take log on both sides of the function, we get the equation shown here. The parameter log a is the intercept of this equation and a is the same efficiency parameter from the Cobb-Douglas production function. Similarly, alpha and beta are the output elasticities with respect to labor and capital. These coefficients, when estimated using OLS, also represent the parameters of the Cobb-Douglas production function. Moreover, we can also assess whether the data shows constant, increasing or decreasing returns to scale. This is easy to figure out using the estimated coefficients of alpha and beta. If the sum of the estimated alpha and beta coefficients is 1, then we have constant returns to scale. If the sum of alpha and beta coefficients is greater than 1, then we know that the data shows increasing returns. Conversely, we have decreasing returns when the sum of these coefficients is less than 1. 
Cobb-Douglas type of production function can also easily include other inputs or factors of production. We are not restricted to only labor and capital. When we estimate it using OLS after log transformation, we can include any number of inputs as independent variables. For example, we can have labor, capital, price of raw materials, price of substitutes and other variables as inputs as shown in the example equation here. Even though the Cobb-Douglas production function is widely used and easy to implement in practice, it has some limitations and shortcomings. Firstly, elasticity of substitution is one in Cobb-Douglas production function. This is one of the major drawbacks of this function because its unit elasticity of substitution makes the function very restrictive. In reality, the elasticity of substitution is not one, but it changes with a change in the level of inputs. As a result, the Cobb-Douglas production function is not flexible in this aspect at all. Secondly, the Cobb-Douglas production function assumes the technology parameter A to be given and constant. This means that we cannot study the changes in technology and its effects using the Cobb-Douglas production function. Industries that witness rapid technological changes cannot be suitably analyzed using this function. As with static technology, Cobb-Douglas function does not take into account the dynamic market conditions and their effects on output. It cannot be used to understand how firms make adjustments to their output in reaction to changing input prices or other market conditions. Finally, the function assumes that all the inputs of the same type are identical and interchangeable, which is unrealistic. For instance, any two units of labor are not the same or identical. Thank you for watching and happy learning!